Okay. So what is the Enterprise Zone? The Enterprise Zone is a state program designed to encourage economic development in economically, economically distressed areas um, of the state. So how it worked out is that the uh, state statutes 38 have all these requirements for what it is. They can only have 16 zones. Um, when they came to us a couple months ago, back in March, they had 16 zones, but they asked all the cities if they would like to do something, join in. Um, we reached out to Louisville, Erie, Boulder, Longmont, everyone to see who wanted to come in to maybe do a North Metro Enterprise Zone. We can all go together. Most of the cities declined, didn't think they would um, qualify, and I'll tell you what qualifiers are in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, but Longmont, Broomfield, and us decided to go together. Longmont will be the zone administrator, mm -hmm. so they do a lot of the paperwork and stuff to process these. Most um, of the time, they'll come to the respective city. They'll go to Broomfield. It'll get forwarded to Longmont Area Economic Development Council. Uh, Jessica Erickson deals with that, so she'll sign off on it gets routed right to the state, they make the investments, they get the credits. Um, it offers state income tax credits uh, and an expansion of the manufacturing sales and use tax exemption that you pay when you buy manufacturing equipment. The enterprise zone designation is based on three criteria, high unemployment, low per capita income, or slow population growth. It's based on census blocks. So some of these blocks have businesses in them and residential areas mixed in together. The idea is that if you meet these criteria, it might be a distressed area, and it would give those that live in that area a chance to join the um, employment in that area. So high unemployment, I think the state's um, unemployment was like 5.1%, so you have to be 25% greater than that, so 6.3 or something. Um, and in some of our census blocks, we did meet that um, through the either um, distressed areas like mobile home parks or something that captured some of that. Low per capita income, I think the state's income is like 24,000, so we hit it at 21.8 in some areas, I think. Mm -hmm. um, slow population growth, I think the, the state's population growth may have been 6%, and so we only had like a 4% population growth in some census blocks, um, so we met it there. Now some of it doesn't exa exactly make sense because SOLA qualified, but it didn't take into account PRANA and PRASANA being built out because this is 2010 mm -hmm. um, American data from the Census Bureau. And so Colorado State Statutes, I'm sorry, Section 39, 30-101 to 112 specifically addresses the Enterprise Zone. That's where you can find all the information on it. So the current Enterprise Zone, this is before we joined in, uh, there's lots of areas with it. Mesa County, uh, Region 10, South Central, Greeley Weld, Denver, Arapaho, Adams, um, Jefferson. You're going to see us right there. North Metro Zone. Um, so we'll hit a couple census blocks in Longmont. They don't have to be contiguous. A couple census blocks uh, in Lafayette, a couple census blocks down in Broomfield. So where are our zones? This will be interesting to go through. So generally speaking, one of our zones, one of our census blocks was south of South Boulder Road, west of Public Road. So that would include Lafayette Tech Center, <coughs> Jack's, the church property, um, Lafayette Marketplace, the bowling alley, where the new assisted living is going on, right along Highway 287. Um, you know, the church is at the corner of 287 and South Boulder Road, Southwest Corner, down here by Centaurus, any of that commercial. Um, there's open space in there. Obviously, no businesses can go there. But it does hit on Lafayette Tech Center, which is important, um, the bowling alley, Jack's area, mm -hmm. things like that. Another area is that area east of Highway 287, west of 120th, and south of South Boulder Road. So, um, yeah, so public road comes down and curves around, but essentially it hits Prana, Prasana, the <coughs> hospital, Etkin Johnson down here, this property up to Dillon if it ever develops, um, those areas. It also hits southeast corner of um, public road in uh, South Boulder Road, so you hit some of that uh, miners crossing properties back there if they're going to invest in, in some equipment. Another area it hits is north of South Boulder Road, east of Public Road, west of 120th, south of Emma. So that would hit the original Flatirons Community Church site. That would hit, um, if you guys knew the, the arc being built out there, 120th, the, the wood manufacturing place, it would hit all that. It would hit the, uh, there's a storage building, or place out there, Lenart, that stores their manufacturing equipment or their Caterpillar equipment. It would hit that. It would hit anything um, on the east side of Public Road from City Hall up mm -hmm. to Emma. So it might hit uh, mm -hmm. City Center if they're going to do some jobs there or anything um, in some areas up there. And then we get a little break. It doesn't hit really any more public road up to uh, Simpson, 
So I think it includes all of Simpson, the south side of Baseline, all the way down to the chicken farm. Really what you get in this area is the Lowe's Wanaka spots, all these developments right here, Simpson Street, and uh, the south side of Baseline. Um, another important piece for that spot, I should say, on um, this one, west of 120th, you get the manufacturing concrete plant, the Lafarge and all that. On the east side, all of Vista Business Park mm -hmm. would qualify as well. So it really, when you look at the city, it hits a lot of our commercial industrial areas, which is a great thing. So what things are included here? They have a bunch of different tax credits listed. Each one has its own requirement qualifications. There's an investment tax credit. So if you invest money in personal property, and I'll go over that in a second, you can get a 3% credit back on your equipment. And there are certain forms your accountant needs to fill out to qualify for each one of these. Um, job training tax credit, so if you train people, you will uh, get a tax credit for that. Commercial vehicle investment tax credit, you can get a credit for that if the uh, vehicle is used in the enterprise zone. People move in and out, taking equipment and things places, so that's really difficult to, to qualify for. Um, new employee, if you create a new employee, you get a tax credit. Um, Employer-sponsored health insurance, get a tax credit for that. Uh, research and development increase, you get a tax credit for that. I don't know that we have a lot that qualify today, but vacant building rehab credit. If it's been vacant for two years, get credit for that to redo it. Um, an exemption to manufacturing and mining equipment and a contribution tax credit, that's for nonprofits. So if you donate, if you're in the enterprise zone, you donate money to them, certain rules and regulations. But I think you can, as a person, write off 125% of your donation, so that helps too. So we'll go through a couple of them. The 3% state income tax credit it's depreciable, tangible property, so furniture, computers, equipment, etc. Um, in this particular instance, cars and trucks that leave the enterprise zone don't qualify, so they have to stay in the enterprise zone. Some exclusions, air conditioning and heating units, boilers qualify if they're part of the manufacturing, so if it was a brewery or something, that would qualify. Boiler, boiler related to your building, heating your building doesn't qualify. Um, some used equipment does count up to a $150,000 limit. There's some restrictions on leased used equipment though. Um, some things that do qualify, agricultural structures, breeding of livestock, if anyone's interested in that, oil pipe, pipelines technically do qualify as an investment. Mm -hmm. So the mobile equipment, property must be used in exclusively in the, easy f in the enterprise zone for the first year. Um, the idea is that this is business expansion or people have hit a limit on their building and want to move and expand. It's not meant for someone to say, I can move across the street, use my same employees, and then qualify. Mm -hmm. So with that said, you have to increase employment. Um, and I don't know if it's 10% or 10 employees or whichever is less or greater, so I'll find that out. But there's some things there, 100% uh, in increase in your investment or a $1 million investment. So you hit th certain thresholds, you take your tax credits, you apply them. Um, when you file your taxes as a business. There are, it's pretty simple, but there are rules on everything. So for the income tax credit, you can take 100% of the first 5,000, 50% above 5,000. You can only claim up to $750,000 in a year, but you can carry for it forward for 12 years. Um, and so once we get more information, we'll be rolling that out to the specific business owner so they know what to do. And um, we're always available to answer questions or reach out to the state to get the info before they make the investment so they know what, what qualifies. Job training counts, 12%. You can write off on your uh, taxes or get a tax credit for. It has to be a formalized training process. Um, it does include airfare hotels, so if people are coming in to train people, that qualifies. It includes a salary of the trainer, so that does, um, but it doesn't include the trainee. New employee, it's an $1,100 per new employee credit. Um, so we have to figure out one thing. Since these are new zones, are the people that are working there now qualify for the first year or two, or is this new credit, new people? Um, and that relates to the health care too. Since it's now formalized, does it start counting because they're a new investment or an existing investment or does not qualify? Mm. Um, <coughs> Agricultural has some tax credits as well, although those probably not, may not be applicable too much. There's a five-year carry forward on this, so if people don't, can't use all their credits, um, they can carry it forward to subsequent years to reduce their tax liability. Health insurance, um, first full, full 
two years in the enterprise zone. Um, the employer has to pay at least 50% of the health care. has to be a qualified health insurance plan through the Affordable Care Act. Um, you get 1000 back per covered employee. Same thing, you can carry forward those credits for future years. So how is the number of employees calculated? You count the regular full-time and part-time employees. Um, it can be prorated for those who work sometimes in the easy and maybe at another facility outside there. Um, but truck drivers don't count. They have to work in the easy for 100% of the time so that a big trucking facility wouldn't come in. Everyone's off-site, but they're taking credits for it. So that doesn't count. Um, calculation, you count the number of employees in the last business day of each calendar month of the tax year. And then you count the sum for each month divide by the number of months the business was in operation during the tax year, figure out what's your actual increase for that employee. Towards the end here, research and development counts. If you do some research and development investments, you'll get tax credits for that. 3% on your increased R&D expenditures. Um, some things that qualify are research and experimental expenditures, as defined by the, uh, the IRS. Uh, must be technological in nature, uh, must be using the useful in the development of a new or improved product or component of the business, must utilize the process of experimentation, and it excludes government funded research. Um, so some places that would work great for this are Vista Business Park, Lafayette Tech Center. Uh, I've had some interest with R&D people coming through and pharmaceutical companies and different things like that. Some of this would qualify for that. For R&D, it's the increase from the two years prior. Um, so if you were a brand new startup, it would be all of that. If you were existing, it's just the increase you did. Um, you've got to spread out the credit over four, th um, four years. It's 3% of a credit, though, and no limit on the carry forward. So you can carry that forward many, many years. Could I just interrupt you? There? Absolutely. If I understood this correctly. So an existing business that is doing R&D, the additional in investment, the delta mm -hmm. growth, is what it's eligible for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, vacant commercial buildings, we have some buildings on public road, this would have been sometimes helpful for it. They're very, very, very strict on what a vacant building is. So it has to be vacant for two years. If you rented it out for a bar mitzvah, not vacant, mm -hmm. even one time. Keep a toolbox in there because you store stuff, it doesn't qualify. Mm -hmm. So this is really, really strict to, to qualify, but it is useful. You get a 25% tax credit on your expenditures. So if you invest $100,000, 25 grand automatic tax credit. Um, limited to 50000 per building, carry forward for five years, maybe claimed by the owner or tenant. Jen Uten and I, who are working on this together, have analyzed what really qualifies in the area. There's really not too many that have been consistently vacant for two years, so it's, well, that one's probably difficult. It also has to be 20 years old. Um, it has to be rehab for commercial use. The hard costs qualify, soft costs don't, planning, engineering, etc. So you have to pre-certify. I can't stress this enough, and I'll say it over and over again. You have to pre-certify. So January 1st, it takes effect. January 2nd, you hire 50 employees. January 3rd, you go, I have to pre-certify. None of it counts. So you have to pre-certify at the beginning of the year or before you make the, the investment. Before you make the investment. I will go through uh, what, what that entails, but it's pretty simple. You go to the Advanced Colorado slash Easy website. You s all you're saying is that I may use tax credits for the upcoming year. You don't even have to identify which one or how much. Mm -hmm. And then if you do use it, then you're pre-qualified. Mm -hmm. um, but can't stress enough, you don't qualify and you make investments. They are very strict, it does not count. Yes. Um, we have to require, uh, we have to certify all businesses for the income tax credits. It's not required on the contribution tax credit, which is the nonprofit tax credit, or the sales and use tax exemption. So those two it doesn't, you don't have to do it for. Um, each year you have to um, pre-certify so you might have multiple years that you're going to carry forward. Each year you have to pre-certify so you're in the queue. It's tied to your tax ID. Um, the local administrator, meaning uh, Erica, or Jessica Erickson in Longmont will pre-certify you. It'll come through me first, go to her, then you're good to go. You may apply up to 15 months before the tax year ends. So you have plenty of time to pre-certify. And again, advancedcolorado.com slash easy. Um, <laughs> So the same tax ID and location is approved in the pre-certification. That's the requirements for us. Uh, the report, you know, they have to report their employment and wage data to the program analysis. They have to report their qualifying activity. We'll review it and make sure it jives with what we believe happened. Uh, and then the complete in advance uh, Department of Revenue, some forms. Generally speaking, sounds complicated. I've heard from the Office of Economic Development and International Trade, oh, they deal with it every day, that it's not so hard 
to fill out these forms, and it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm sure any business accountant can probably uh, know some of this stuff. How do you do it online at their application at advancedcolorado slash easy? You establish a user ID, apply for the pre-certification, uh, apply for the certification, the official certification after the tax year ends. Um, you sign up, you'll get email reminders to, to do it before the tax year and all that stuff, so they remind you for you. Um, and advancedcolorado.com slash easy is the website. Uh, last bit of information, there's a manufacturing sales and use tax exemption. So machinery and machine tools used in ma manufacturing are exempt from state and sales use tax. Um, we may opt in for a local exemption, which I think we do already. Um, it's used predominantly in manufacturing process and invoices capitalized and form DR 1190. I don't think we already charge, so I don't know if this applies for us. Um, We'll go through it. So some facts about this because it's really interesting. Um, so at the meeting, for example, that we have a big city south of us, uh, Denver, that was trying to get a lot of their spots in because they qualify under these three criteria. And they halted them, the Office of Economic Development and International Trade, um, near the airport because those really aren't economically distressed areas. Those are green fields you're just wanting to develop. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that came about. We had no trouble with ours. Um, we took them on a tour. None of the other jurisdictions that were changing theirs had an issue. Um, but they are concerned that these aren't used for, you know, greenfield development. It's economically distressed areas that need to employ people. But um, 3,865 businesses certified um, in 2014. They earned 42.7 million in income tax credits. 26,402 donations were certified. They earned taxpayers 11.6 million in income tax credits, while bringing in 50.5 million to almost 400. 400 and 400 projects. So that's the 125 percent. Some of this might be useful for art underground, um, any hospital expansion, mm -hmm. any nonprofits, mm -hmm. all that okay. stuff. Yeah. There are limits to that too. I think the don maximum donation is 100,000. So I think you can only get up to 125. I'll know more about that. But if anyone wants to donate 100,000, we'll find <laughs> we'll find a place. Um, so um, to recap. Um, we entered into this recently, it was in August that we went to Office of Economic Development and International Trade. Mm -hmm. um, there's a 10 year review period, so every 10 years they have to review this. So honestly, I have to be honest, in 10 years when they re-review re the numbers, a lot of these zones may not qualify for income or unemployment or wages um, or growth. So in 10 years I would anticipate some of these areas automatically opt out. Now what does that mean for businesses that invested in there expecting these tax credits? There's a way to grandfather them if they can say that we invested in this spot on year eight expecting these tax credits. The Office of Economic Development and International Trade will grandfather them. Most new businesses though won't be able to go in but they'll be grandfathered to get their tax credits. Again, we're going to hold a meeting um, November 4th, Wednesday, 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. in City Council Chambers. <coughs> we're going to send out a notice to everyone linking them to this streaming video, inviting them to come. Um, anyone can contact me through email rogerc at cityoflafayette.com or phone number 303-661-1262. Sonia at the state has been very helpful so she can answer any questions. Um, that pretty much sums up the presentation. So we're moving forward with good things. Um, enterprise zones are, are new to Colorado relatively but really old to the Midwest. New York's been sporting these things for 30 years. Um, when I worked in Minnesota, I had enterprise zones 28 years ago. Um, it's, it's a phenomenon that has gone, and the delta is about growth. It's about adding jobs, adding <coughs> investment. And people would look at us in Broomfield and say, are you crazy? You have a problem? Well, well the data follows the census data, and, and it maybe changes a little bit out there by Prana and other places. Or You know, we, we had a lot of empty buildings. Uh, um, Boulder electric vehicles and all that Kenny Shell stuff up on the hill there. Up, up to a couple years ago, um, we had empty Albertsons. We had empty this, you know. So, um, but it follows the data. It doesn't follow the lobbying or the politics. It just follows the data. So we decided that, well, maybe our data does qualify. As you noticed, when Roger followed it, it did, just like it did in Denver. Now, some cities stood down and said, oh, it's too much hassle, too much work. But really, it's a, it's the, it's finding those spots in your communities that is underperforming and then trying to leverage those. But boy, in Indiana, Illinois, Minnesota, 
this enterprise zone of the Delta raising jobs in certain areas has been around for a long time. Not a long time in Colorado. I remember filling out those reports for certain businesses that added those new jobs that had to certify to the state of Minnesota and do all this stuff, just like that. Now, it can be done. The key is, is Roger has to educate people. If you act first and ask second, ain't gonna work. Mm -hmm. So the, the message in these zones has to go out is that if people are gonna add jobs or expand their plant or add on this new wing, they kind of want to get this message first so they can slide it in. Otherwise, it's just poof, too late, mm -hmm. too gone, won't happen. Um, um, but it is, you look over town, uh, uh, we're a town, not, well, not that long ago, we were a town of two, two faces. We had some places that economically weren't going anywhere. And then we had places that looked like they were lit on fire, you know? Um, and, and, and recently, I think it's improved since that time. But again, this is not about politics or lobbying. It's following that census data. Um, and so we decided to, and look what, lo and behold, the ones that stood down have nothing. And the ones we follow the data, we could possibly add some jobs out in that east end of town and, uh, and help them do it. I have some questions. I know you do too. Yeah. Is this one of those opportunities where we can start really being strategic around certain, like the tech industry and saying, you know, there's these tax incentives, there's opportunities, there's a vacant building. How much of it is outreach and how much of it is already incorporating sort of the businesses that are already here so that they stay here or perhaps expand here? Mm -hmm. I guess that's sort of my question. Mm -hmm. Well, if, you know, I guess the state of Colorado, I wouldn't care if you brought them in from another state like California, but to cannibalize them from Highlands Ranch or some other place, that ain't gonna pass the smell test. So um, it's really about adding jobs, not stealing it from another place. So let's be real careful there. Um, I guess if someone wants to land in here from Silicon Valley and get out of California, Colorado won't stop them. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it won't bode well to take them from one city to another. So you got multiple layers of it. One is that a lot of really big businesses that want to relocate, we get a sheet prospect from the state Office of Econ Economic Development and International Trade that says someone's looking for a data center, mm -hmm. already built 100,000 square foot building. Okay, I don't go for that one. Right. Someone's looking for a build to suit 50,000, 300 uh, person, you know, it would employ 300, 300 people. So we can outreach with when we have, because I've sent out letters to respond to these prospects and say, we're in an enterprise zone, by the way, or we're going to be, mm -hmm. or the state already knows who's in the enterprise zone. If and a company calls them and says, sure. hey, we're, we've done this before, we want to be interested, they sure. know who's in the enterprise zone. So there's some activity at the state level kind of pushing these mm -hmm. prospects. They consistently send out prospects and try to... When we had businesses in front of you and we talked about the Dharmacom, the company with the RNA, the nucleic acid, and all those PhDs, and they were standing in front of you explaining that, and Dr. Bigner was going, wow, mm -hmm. a little in the past a little bit, but that company was doing all this high tech right out here, uh, nucleic acid and base material for all this medicine. If this would have been in place, bingo. Mm -hmm. Got it. Mm -hmm. okay. It on. helps, it helps it nonprofits, is. and it helps, yeah. um, you know, one example of who it really helps just by luck is off of Old Laramie Trail where 287 is where the assisted living is going in. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not going to be operating by January 1st when this is in, perfect. January 1st, they're probably going to pre-certify, I'll tell them. And all the employees they hire, which are going to be brand new for an assisted living, huge tax credit for them right off the bat. Yeah, great benefit. I have a question. I noticed in the zone that it encompasses our marijuana grow operations. Now, are they somehow excluded from this, or are they Absolutely. In? So you have, for the Office of Economic Development and International Trade is very strict on it has to meet federal laws, so they don't allow any of that. Mm. No bennies for those guys. Nope. Oh. Okay. No jobs in the in that market going to qualify. <laughs> Any other questions? I think it's yeah, super it's exciting and <laughs> creative to, to, yeah. to partner with Broomfield mm -hmm. and Longmont. I mm -hmm. think that's, that's terrific. It was very good. We're sharing a little bit of the cost. Sure. Longmont's taking most of it. Actually, the state, the numbers have changed, so don't quote me on it, but the state uh, has said that to administer this program, it costs $36,000. That's the number they made up. It changed recently, but for ease of numbers, I'll take $36,000. Um, they cut a check for half that to the administer, administrator, so Longmont Area Economic Development Council gets half that, which means that us, Broomfield, and Longmont are responsible for the other half, sure. um, and we've shared even a less portion than that. Longmont's taking most of the, most of the hit. So for a small cost, oh, no, I think we'll... Um, you know, yeah. we shouldn't be bashful to stand with Broomfield and Longmont. I mean, mm -hmm. I think I would trade the economic status with either one of them. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're maybe the poor sister of that 
triad. Um, so, so we're in good company there. And, I, and again, it's just spot zoning. That's what it is. It carves out areas that the census number directs you to and, and ignores the good areas. That's what it does. So in addition to some, um, this public information that you're scheduling, mm -hmm. is there going to be a permanent repository of information that developers or, or employers or R&D companies can look at or yeah. do they contact so you? How do they I have to verify the, the web address from the city. I'm sure if you go in the search bar and type enterprise zone, it's probably popped up. I think it might be cityoflafayette.com slash EZ or yes. Enterprise Zone. Debbie's made up one. We're going to put the YouTube video of this on there. Um, so there will be a repository of that information. The state has a really good fact sheet. It's very simple, a fact sheet on it. And they have their own website of pre-certifying and all that stuff. So we'll, um, you know, every year, a couple of years, as, especially during when people come in for pre-apps for buildings, we'll have to let them know then, hey, by the way, you might qualify. Um, it'll be some, maybe every couple of year, outreach to people, landlords. Um, I sent a blast out in an email saying that we were going to hold a meeting very soon about this and letting the people know. Um, with the email that said we, we got voted number 44 on the 100 best places to live. Um, so I went through our mailing list on emails and probably sent it to about 150 to 200 people there. Um, and I actually met with someone today who um, wants to relocate from Boulder, coincidentally here. So it's a good chance to outreach and just keep hitting those things and yeah. keep going through it. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, based on, based on the numbers and, and, and potential um, credits, you can actually begin to create some profiles. Mm -hmm. right? some, you, who, who would benefit most from the largest number of credits available mm -hmm. and, and begin to create, not necessarily type of business, but uh, in terms of employers, uh, research development, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Techie company so you can begin to look would that. really cash in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you can. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, we can proactively look at who would be a really good fit into certain areas. Yeah, and I think it's good, um, you know, Broomfield has a smaller area than we do in terms of size. Um, some of it might be redeveloped. Longmont has the Butterball factory that they want to redo and some other things. Um, but we have a huge swath in the middle of Highway 7, Dillon, 287, where our neighbors, Louisville and Erie, don't. So when people do, like the brokers go to uh, Coal Creek Tech Center to build something, I know for a fact I've already told brokers and reached out to them, they're going to be looking back at Lafayette Tech Center. So it's a win. Really good. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.